Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Vlogs Meet and I just got back from a trip to Ireland with my family. And this video is not about that trip. However, I will have a video about the trip because I had a very rigorous itinerary planned for all of us. And we visited a number of distilleries, breweries, bars, etc. So I have suggestions of where to go if you're in Dublin and Galway in Ireland. Um, but while I was in Ireland, I reached 1,000 subscribers. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of my subscribers, all of you new subscribers. Thank you so much for getting me to this point. So for this savor at home video, I'm going to be tasting one of the whiskeys that I picked up while I was in Ireland. This is Dunville's Single Malt. This is their Palo Cortado cask finish. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I had never heard of Dunville before. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the Irish whiskey market. Sorry to admit that. However, Dunville is a popular brand and since their revival in 2013, they have gotten more and more popular with their releases and their barrel finishings. So while we were in Dublin, we stopped into the Celtic whiskey shop, which was amazing. I was like a kid in a candy store. And one of the guys working there, Tim, was really, really knowledgeable and super helpful and gave us tons of samples, talked to us about a bunch of the whiskeys that they had, even some of the rums that they had. And he said that the best bottle that they had currently that was under a hundred dollars or a hundred euros was this bottle of Dunville single malt, the Palo Cortado finish. So yeah, we picked up a bottle. I trusted Tim. So shout out to Tim um, for helping us out and giving us a great experience. And yeah, we came home with a number of different whiskeys. So Dunville actually dates back to the early 1800s in Belfast. It was a tea and spirits merchant company and it had a few names, but eventually settled on Dunville and Co. And their spirits, their whiskeys became really, really popular. They were sourcing and blending these whiskeys and eventually they decided their whiskeys were so popular that they should open up their own distillery. So in 1869, they opened the Royal Irish Distillers. At their peak, they were producing 2.5 million gallons of whiskey per year. That's, that's a lot. I think throughout the whole country at that time, they were producing like 14 million or something like that. So a significant portion was Dunville whiskey. Now, Prohibition was a pretty rough time for Ireland as a whole, and it negatively impacted the Royal Irish distillers, as well as a bunch of the other distilleries in the country. And in 1931, the chairman and last heir of the company, Robert Lambert Dunville died, and that ended up leading to the closure of the distillery. And in 1936, everything was liquidated. So everyone thought that was the end of Dunville whiskey until 2013, when the Ecklinville distillery decided to revive Dunville. The Ecklinville distillery was the first new distillery in over 125 years in Northern Ireland. And they laid down their first barrels in August of 2013. It's a cool distillery. It looks very nice, brand new, and they are doing their whiskeys from start to finish. So from the fields to the glass, they're growing their own barley, they're malting it themselves, distilling it, aging it, etc. They have a few other whiskey brands, but Dunville's is the first one that they've revived. And as far as I know, they are still sourcing the whiskey that they put into the Dunville bottles. So I don't know where it's sourced from. However, somewhere on the internet, I heard slash read that it was Cooley that they're sourcing from. So if you're at a liquor store picking up whiskeys, whether they be Irish whiskeys, American whiskeys, whatever, 
and you don't really have someone helpful at the liquor store that's telling you about all the whiskeys that you're trying and you're trying to decide did Dunville get distilled by their distillery or is it sourced right if you're trying to figure that out there are hints on the back so there's new rulings for the labeling for uh, especially in the U.S. This, of course, was not bought in the U.S., but especially in the U.S., there's kind of new rules for what you can and cannot put on bottles because a lot of non-distiller producers were putting produced by blah, blah, blah distillery when in fact they were just sourcing and bottling the, it themselves and um, claiming that it was their own. Um, so the U.S. has changed that ruling where you can't just say produced by, you have to say like distilled, aged and bottled by, or you just say bottled by if you did uh, just source it and bottle it. Anyways, that to say on the back of this, it says aged and bottled at the Eklundville Distillery, aged and bottled. So that's a dead giveaway right there that they did not distill this themselves because if they did, it would say distilled, aged and bottled or whatever uh, on the back. But anyways, does it matter? I don't know, to some people it does. So let me tell you about this. So single malt Irish whiskey, just like single malt scotch, has to be made at one single distillery from 100% malted barley. So this is being sourced from one single distillery. Maybe it's Cooley, maybe it's not. I don't actually know. It's produced from 100% malted barley and then it's aged for a minimum of 10 years. Again, there's no distinction of how long it was finished in the Pelo Cortado casks. However, on the internet, I read slash heard that it was finished for about three years, but I don't know. And then it's also said that this was previously aged in ex bourbon casks, which makes sense. It's at 46% ABV and this costs about 82 euros, which is like $90 in the US. So not too bad. Now, Palo Cortado Sherry is pretty cool. It's like this accidental sherry that supposedly only happens when the sherry decides it wants to happen. As far as flavor profile goes, it's said to have the delicate bouquet of Amontillado sherry, however, also has the body and palate of Oloroso sherry. And that does go into how it's made. So Palo Cortado starts as a sherry that's being aged similar to a fino or fermented similar to a fino where it's under a floor. So this is this yeast that's this protective layer over the top of the sherry. It's fermenting the sugars into alcohol while also protecting the sherry from any oxidation. So there's no oxidative aging happening. Oloroso, on the other hand, does not have the floor. So there's a lot more oxidation going on. Now it's said that the Palo Cortado sherry starts as a fino and then suddenly the floor drops. <laughs> So instead of being on top of the surface of the liquid, it falls and now the sherry is exposed to oxygen and is able to oxidize. So that's how you're getting a combination of the fino and the oloroso flavors. It's said that only one to 2% of grapes that are crushed to produce sherry actually make Palo Cortado. So it's this very like rare type of sherry that exists. For those that are interested, like myself, the floor is comprised of specific species of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So it's really cool that this is just a typical brewer's baker's yeast, but it's specific strains that cause it to create this floor, this pellicle layer, essentially, if you're a brewer, on the top of the sherry. Anyways, this video is not about sherry although I just went on for a while about sherry. But I think we should try this because I have not opened it yet and I'm very excited to try it.
This does have a nice color. It's got, you know, a good like dark golden, very, very light caramel color to it. So before I dive in, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, you can join our neat community over on Patreon. I've got a link in the description below and I would greatly appreciate your support. There's a lot of raisins on the nose, right off the bat, a lot of raisins that are like soaked in apple juice. There's some nuttiness too. This is really fun. Did someone just growl? Oh, I didn't hear anything. No? But I have my headphones in. Oh. Oh my God. What? I think they might have gotten stung by a bee. What? Okay, sorry for that interruption. We're pretty sure Sally got stung by a bee. Um. <laughs> Did you get stung by a bee? Did you get stung by a bee? Ooh, there's a lot of butterscotch. Come in, say hi to the people. Hello. Wow. Oh, it smells good. That's it? You're yeah. not gonna elaborate? It smells good. There's a little bit of like dusty waxiness that I get a lot in bourbons. It's almost like a dusty orange and light vanilla scented candle. But this smells really nice. There's a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a lot more fruit on the palate too. Mm -hmm. So many figs in the form of fig newtons. So many raisins. There's a stewed apple thing. Oh, what else is there? Ooh, ooh. Some plums and nectarines, like really, really juicy ones. There's cinnamon and cloves. A little bit of a like tobacco thing as well as some espresso. This also has a nice mouthfeel too. It's got a nice viscous mouthfeel. There's a little bit of heat that presents as like some tingliness. Some of that bitter orange comes forward on the palate too. I'm now getting more ripe fruits on the nose. And a little bit of like, this is gonna sound very weird, a little bit like a really rich tomato sauce. If you were like pairing a rich tomato sauce with like a dark Cabernet, would you do that? Would you pair tomato sauce with Cabernet? Yeah, for sure. Nice Sunday meal in the cab. I'm very excited about this one. There's also some nuttiness on the palate, so... I feel like I'm getting... Mm. some Brazil nuts on the palate. It's good. So you said it smells good and now you're saying it tastes good? Correct. Yeah. <sighs> um, it has a really nice mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. It is a little hot mm -hmm. for 46. Mm -hmm. I don't get, I thought I was going to get punched in the face with, I mean, I know it's not sherry, but like sherry and red fruits and etc. And it's a little more subtle. It is sherry. Is that what this is? Palo Cortado. Palo Cortado? Is yeah. it sherry? Mm -hmm. I already talked about sherry. Okay. I'm Jerry. I already talked about sherry. <laughs> it's not as like, there's so much sherry that all that's all you can taste. See, but I am getting a lot of fruits. I am too, but I feel like a lot of sherry stuff, that's all you pick up. But I'm picking up a lot more, like some spices, some lemon. Maybe the figs that you were saying, like a fig Newton jam. It's really nice. It's really nice. I'm glad um, we picked it up. 
Yeah, but weirdly, and I don't know what. Yeah, I just I just know this because we taste a lot of different whiskeys, but it tastes like an Irish whiskey, which is cool. Um, you know, like I can tell from having a bourbon or a scotch or an Irish whiskey, and this tastes like an Irish whiskey. Which I don't know. <laughs> you can't elaborate on that. No. Mm. It's a nice little caramel. So. Irish whiskeys are known for being approachable and friendly. I wouldn't describe it as that. No? I mean, it is, it is but like, you know, I feel like that just means it has no taste or something. No. This, this tastes good. Like I mentioned before, it smells good and it tastes good. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Would you recommend? Yes. So. How much did we buy this for? I think it was like, it ended up being like 90 USD. Yes. Would yes. Would recommend for that price. Mm -hmm. Would you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So remember Tim? Yeah, he's a good guy. Tim said there were three bottles left and he said these will be gone by later today. Mm -hmm. So from what I've gathered, Dunville's releases do go very quickly. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave us a comment. We'll be back to you soon with some more unique videos. I mean, we picked up a lot of Irish whiskey. I think we will have more Irish whiskeys. We've got some exciting to things taste. to taste. Yeah. yeah. Robert Rant. Robert, <laughs> Robert, <laughs> what? You got it, baby. I can't say Robert Lambert Dunville. Robert Lambert Dunville. Oh, that is hard to say. Robert Lambert Dun Lambert. Robert, Robert Lambert. Lambert Dunville. Dunville. Robert Lambert Dunville. That's hard to say. Robert Lambert Lambert. <laughs> <sighs>